Hey guys, my name is Lorraine Wright, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you about how Uber basically pays me. Yes, together with a friend of mine, started a company called LV Elite Cars, where we essentially buy cars from abroad, we ship them to Ghana just so they can work as Uber cars. So, if you are interested in learning more, do stick around, do like, subscribe, comment, because this job really is not easy. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, it's great to be here and do this again. It's not easy. I'm gonna try my best to be consistent as possible. So this video, I'm actually excited to do this video. And many people really ask me the ins and outs of the things that I do. So I'm really hoping to break this down to you. So everyone that knows me knows that I love Ghana. I've traveled to more than 30 countries in the world. And out of all of them, Ghana still remains my favorite because it's home, it is home. So I tend to travel to Ghana at least four or five times a year. Now, when I come to Ghana, unfortunately, I don't have a car for myself. Most people in Ghana either have their own car and driver, um, or they will use taxis, or they will use public transport. But a public transport system is not as efficient as we are used to in more developed countries. And if you would like some form of efficiency, you're not really gonna get it. As in, if you say you are gonna take exactly X amount of time to get from place, place A to place B, I actually don't think that happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Traffic is absolutely crazy. Always, always, always use taxis or always use Ubers. And I remember very often in around the 2016, 2017, 2018 times, I would always be using Ubers. And I, every time I got into an Uber car, I was quite intrigued about the take up of Uber in Ghana. So I used, always used to have a conversation with the Uber drivers. And I would ask some questions around how the Uber business has been in Ghana, how are they finding it, etc. And I started to realize that these drivers I would say at least 80% of the drivers that I spoke to, the cars that they were driving were not their own cars. And what I realized is that they were driving as Uber drivers on behalf of other people. Get a car and give it to a driver and the driver will drive as an Uber driver and they'll pay the car owner some money for the privilege of being able to use the car. And so because getting startup capital to buy, especially for, how do I put it, the informal sector or the bottom of the pyramid in Ghana is very coming up with a large sum of capital to buy a car is not that easy so those people that either have some form of credit worthiness or those people that have the money or the capital to get cars will get the cars give it to drivers drivers will drive on their path and then give them some money every week for the privilege of using the car so I started asking Uber drive I was really intrigued by this model because I wasn't used to this model in the UK I, and I don't know if I could be, it could have changed by now, I don't know, so I don't, I don't speak to any Uber drivers in the cars in, in, in the UK anymore, I just don't, we don't have the time, you know, so in UK, I, I, I think it's, you, it has to be your own car, or you're leasing it officially or something like that, but in Ghana, most, I would say, 70 to 80% of the cars that are on the road are not owned by the drivers that are driving the cars. So, I was really intrigued by that model. So every time I got into a car, I would ask the drivers, how are you finding it? How much do you, how much, I would, the drivers were very open. I would ask them, how much commission does Uber charge you? I would ask them, which is 25%. I'd ask them, how much do you pay your car owners for using your car every week, for using their car every week? I would ask them, how much sales from Uber do you make every week, every day? And you'll give me this information because I'll do it in a way that I'll just be conversing with them. And I'll literally be there taking notes. There have been times where I've recorded them in the voice note. So, so just for my interest, so the ones that you think are the best one is where the driver, there was the car owner will say, make me a hundred and then you take the rest. Or... Not necessarily. But then, it's a human here, it's work, okay? Yeah. It's work. And the, this work is... It's based on a lot of factors. The driver's ability to go to work and he's not lazy. Sure. So all that thing is being equal. Do yeah. every day. I believe in this target thing. Yeah. Human being, you're supposed to set goals and target for yourself. Sure. For every day. Today I want to do this. I want to achieve that. I want to do yeah. this. Yeah. And so for me, it's 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 okay. Yeah, how could they do that then? 
How would... Oh no, honey, so you check, you look at the way the person is working and you know. When, when would I get time to go and use the car to go and do my personal business? Mm. If you can track every detail that the car has, 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 has traveled. Right now, the yeah. time that I started, you, you, you can know. Yeah. And the time that I'll close, I'll sleep, you can know. Yeah. So if I'm sleeping around 12, 1, yeah. 2, 3, and I'm waking up around 4, 5, 6, or 7, yeah. that in between that time, where did I go? Yeah, okay. That you think that I might have gone to use the car to do my personal business sure. and blah, 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 and then. So the only way that you can use to, to control me is... Um, but there, I'll literally be there taking notes and taking a mental note about the conversation I've had. I will really dig in. I'll be, you know, asking them what their challenges are, you know, when are the peak time. I'll ask all of the questions that you could ask. And it hit me that someone's making money. The car owners are making money. I mean, this is not tons and tons of money. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're going to make thousands and millions from this. It's going to take time. This is an uh, investment. We do know that cars depreciate. So I'm gonna be very clear with what I wanna tell you, if you're looking for a get rich quick scheme or if you're looking for a make a ton of extra money scheme, you're not gonna get it from what I'm about to tell you. What you're gonna learn is something that I believe is more valuable. The things I've learned about the Ghana system, the things that I've learned in terms of buying and selling cars, the things that I've learned, I mean, even that little pocket money or that change you may get at the end of the week, if you make it effective, it will be profitable. But I'm not saying you're going to make tons and tons of money. I'll be very clear with you about that. And I'll break down and explain to you why. So through having these conversations with the Uber drivers, it hit me that someone must be making some money here. Uber, yes, but also the car owners. I thought, how can I get a piece of the pie? As I normally do. And in business, there is nothing new under the sun. In life, there is nothing new in the sun. The Bible says it. And I thought, they can do it, I can do it. Even when it comes to business, everything is copied. I remember speaking to a friend of mine, he gave me a very, very good analogy. And this really kind of, it really hit me, especially if you are looking to start a new business or looking, and the emphasis here is on looking. Because when Sir Isaac Newton was sitting under a tree, and an apple fell. They said that he discovered gravity or it was uncovered. And they use that because if you break down the word uncover, for example, it's split into un and then cover, or you've got discover. And it, you've got the word cover, so it means something was covered, something was there before. It's just covered. You have removed something in order to reveal it, right? So I think Newton sitting under the tree, apple fell, and he discovered gravity. It was already there. It's just that he was in the right location under the tree when the apple fell for him to then start thinking about it. And for those people that always talk about, oh, you copied me, you copied my business, etc. There was nothing, the thing was there before you, okay? I want to be very clear, the thing was there before you. Even if it was the most innovative thing, I'm sure out of the 8 billion people that there are in the world, I'm sure someone has this idea. It's just about executions. 1% idea, 99% execution. Now, I know I'm digressing here a little bit, but just to, be, just to be very, very clear. If I wasn't going into Ubers, asking questions, being in the location, thinking about it, I wouldn't have uncovered this opportunity. So for those people that are kind of looking for business ideas, don't run around looking and searching and searching. Be in that environment, absorb what is going on around you, and you will discover the opportunity. And that's just, I know it's a little bit of a digress and going to a different direction, but just think about that analogy. And that, when I was told about that, it really, I really had to think about it. I was like, wow, that is so true, it's so true. But anyway, I digress, I know. So, if you remember from one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I lived and worked in Switzerland for almost four years. So straight away, I, I knew that I wanted to go buy some cars from Switzerland and ship them to Ghana. I didn't want to buy them in Ghana because I knew that most cars in Ghana, especially the small cars operating, let me be very clear, in Ghana, for Uber, it's typically small cars that are on the road. So Nissan Micros, this, even Nissan Micros are very rare. Kia, Kia Picantos, those are probably the most popular cars for Uber in Ghana. If you see a Kia Picanto and you shout Uber, there's a 95% probability that car will be an Uber car. 
There's also, so it's basically the smaller cars, the smaller type cars are the cars that operate here in Ghana. I know in the UK, for example, the cars that we typically have are the Toyota, Toyota uh, Pure, I don't even know what, how you call it, but you know what I mean, the people that live in, in the UK know. Or if you want the X, I never use that version. I always use the standard version, so I have no idea what the version of the head is. Is it executive or something like that? But anyway, um, so, I thought to myself, well, these cars must be not as expensive as the cars that we're used to getting into for Uber. So let me just go and find why. I, I knew that the cars, sorry, I know I'm back and forth here. I knew these cars weren't that expensive. I did consider looking into Ghana, but I realized in Ghana, you can't trust cars that you buy here. I personally can't. A lot of cars in Ghana tend to be what they call accident cars, which is where they essentially piece together a car from cars, from cars that have had accidents. So you, do, you can't trust this. This happens in Ghana, I kid you not. And it's it's not illegal. There initially was a law to stop importing accident cars, but I think they reversed it recently. Um, but abroad, or where I'm from in the UK, that would never happen. You can never piece together a car based on accident cars. So I thought to myself, let me, it's best to be safe than sorry, let me get a car from abroad. And I can't buy a car from the UK because the steering wheel is on the right hand side. Whereas in Ghana, the steering wheel is on the left hand side. And I know in Switzerland, the car, the steering wheel is on the same side as Ghana. So I thought, since I live there, I know, know the system, let me go buy the car in Switzerland. And as this, uh, I'll be very clear, I mean, in Ghana, not all of the cars are accident cars. I'll be real with you, there are genuine cars. But I personally just had more confidence in going to find a car in a developed country or, a, or an area that I knew where I knew their processes when it comes to having cars that are officially roadworthy. So they'll have their MOT, they'll have the right checks, etc. That was my, because it's, it's an investment. And we know cars appreciate, but I don't want it to depreciate that fast. So I need it to withstand the test of time. And I need it to be strong because cars, roads in Ghana are not good at all. Especially if you get going to a back road or an off road, if you put a car that has not got the robustness onto those roads, it will spoil after six months or something. It will not last. So my intention was to buy a car, not spend so much money because I wanted to test out the system and be able to get it to start to work for me. Now, I thought, or it was lazy in my spirit that I had to do this with someone I could not do it by myself. And the person that I, that I was led to was, pretty much my best friend, so Viviana, who I do this with, and she lives and works in Switzerland, so she still lives there and still works there, and she's German, so she speaks the language, so it's perfect. I only really understand a few bits and pieces, but the fact that she's, someone is there on the ground, able to negotiate with car dealers, be able to get the car shipped, she speaks the language, she knows the market, she has her own cars, etc. there in Switzerland. So who better to partner with? I told her about this and she was 100% on it. You know, we have the same minds when it comes to thinking about business, expansion, doing stuff in Ghana, and it was just a no-brainer for both of us. So we decided to form the company LV Elite Cars and we do buying and selling of Uber-type cars for the purpose of being on the road as Uber cars in Ghana. So if anyone is interested in terms of buying these type of cars, do reach out to me and I will, I, 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 that's the service that we run. That service is we will buy cars on your behalf, we will ship it to Ghana, we can do the full process for you where we clear it, we work with clearing agents, we can register the car for you, we can get trackers installed, we can get insurance done, we can get the roadworthiness done and we'll get it ready for you, we can even help you find a driver. So reach out to me and I would also help you to through this process. But this is a business that we run, so please don't be asking me for free advice because this is our business. But I'll be more than happy. I mean, I'm gonna put a lot of information into this video right now, but I will not be going into absolutely every point of it because that is what we're here for. So if you do wanna reach out to me, please feel free to do that. And we will buy cars for you in Switzerland or Germany according to your budget and ship them over to Ghana. So, with that done and that said, I will talk you through how the process ended up working for ourselves. So Viviana being there on the ground in Switzerland, I had left Switzerland by this time. So I had uh, moved back to the UK and 
we had a budget. What we did is, based on the information that I had gathered on the ground in Ghana, I started to build a financial model. I started to understand how much we would need to spend on a car and how much our revenue would be to understand our break even point. So, this is information I'm about to give you guys. So, get your paper and pens ready, or if you can put your phone, whatever. Anyway, I found out at the time, at the time, when we first started, when I first started doing the investigations, Uber car owners and drivers were making money. Uber car owners were getting about a thousand cities a week from their car drivers. Now you're gonna have to convert this into a local currency. I cannot do that conversion for you right now. That was then, that was about two years ago. Then people started catching on. They started catching on and the system got very, very saturated. So when I was doing my business case for this, I was going on a thousand, getting a thousand cities every single week and then working that out in terms of how much a car should be. And remember, we don't need to buy expensive cars. These are second-hand cars that we need to buy as long as it fits the garden requirements, which is do not ship cars that are older than 10 years old. So I wanted to look for just before that. <laughs> because I don't want to spend so much money. It's all about making profit here. So I was using that calculation. But then the price started to be going down and down and down because the market started to get saturated. So then the car owner started to get 600 cities a week. Then the, the drivers will start to pay the car owners 500 cities a week. And now it's down to about 400 cities a week. And this is because the market is heavily saturated. We also have Bolt, which used to be called Taxify, which is a, a competitor to Uber. And a lot of people are using Bolt now as well. So people, you'll tend to find drivers will have both of the apps on their phone and they'll either get a request from Bolt or they'll get a request from Uber. So with this said, Let's use the calculation of 400 cities because it's going to start going lower and lower. I mean, there's some people, car owners in the market now that are getting 350. But use, four, fifth, use 400, to, use somewhere between 350 or four, to 400 to do your calculations. The whole idea is that a car driver will drive your car as an Uber driver. Uber will charge 25% per trip. Every single day, a car driver will probably get around... Hey guys, so this is the car that I drive while I'm in Ghana. Come Well, this is one of the cars that I have here in Ghana. Together with a friend of mine, we buy and we ship cars specifically for the purpose of driving Uber in Ghana, where we buy and ship cars from Switzerland or Germany for people to use them as Uber cars in Ghana. So if you're interested in buying a car specifically for the purposes of driving for Uber or the purposes of giving it to a driver to drive for Uber on your behalf, then do reach out to us. Our email address is below. Thank you for coming this out. One of the drivers, William. Yeah, yeah, yeah. William drives this car. Yeah. I'm the one driving this, this one. How's it been driving, William? Oh, it's good. How's the consumption? Okay. How long have you been driving for? I've been driving almost one year now. Okay, I see. How's business? The business is good.